Hey everyone, in this video I'll be going through how to solve the time conversion problem from HackerRank. The problem is rated as easy difficulty and I'm going to be going through it in JavaScript. So the problem here is very straightforward. We're being asked to create a function that converts standard time to military time. And standard time is your two 12 hour cycle AM PM format and military time is 0 to 24 hours. So the first thing to note is between standard and military time the minutes and the seconds are always going to be the same so really the only thing that we're converting is the hours and then of course you have to shave off the AM or PM at the end um, for military but because we're looking at the hours uh, the first thing we can do is kind of look at the different cases of conversion so uh, the first case would be if we had 12 AM midnight that's going to be converted to hour 00 on military time. And then the second case is from everything um, from 1 a.m. to 12 p.m., the conversion is going to be the same. I mean, you're not going to be converting anything. So essentially, we do nothing. And then in our last case, everything from 1 p.m. to 11 p.m., for the conversion, we take original hour, and then we add 12. So for example, um, 3 p.m. is going to be hour 15 on military time. So now that we have these cases, uh, we can just convert those to if-else statements. The first thing to do is create a variable to store am or pm. So we can just say let am pm equal um, the character at index 8, right? Because index 8 is going to be our capital A or our capital P. The next thing to do is create another variable um, to store the hour that we've converted. So we can just set this to an empty string for now. And now we want to differentiate between AM or PM. So we can use if statements for that. So we just do if AM PM is equal to A and then we can have our else block hold all of our PM times. So now within this we have to detect our first case and that is midnight, 12 AM. So to do that we can say if the uh, substring 0 2 equals 12. So basically what substring does is it takes uh, consecutive characters from a string and uh, 0, 2 is going to give us the characters from index 0 to index 1 actually. So you your second index here is going to be what you want plus 1. So if you wanted uh, index in indices 1 through 5 or 0 through 5 you would say 0, 6. Um, so that's kind of tricky. But uh, once we have that you can just set the uh, military hour to 00. zero. And that's our first case. So now our second case is going to be partially covered by this else statement. Um, basically we're going to cover 1 a.m. to 11 a.m. So you can say else military hour equals our original hour, right? Because we're not supposed to do anything for these. So we can just copy that in and that's it. So now for our PM, we still have to take care of this 12 PM where we do nothing. So we can just say if the substring, it's exactly the same as this other line. If the substring is 12, then we do nothing. So these two combined, that'll cover our second case. And our third case is basically everything else on our PM side. And in that case, we add 12. So we can take this, copy it in, and what we want to do is turn this into an int. So you can use the parse int function to do that. And you have to put 10 here to indicate that it's base 10. But once we have that, we can just add 12 to it. And that should be good. So now we just got to return the value. So they want us to return the format 
like this. So basically the same format, but shaving off the AMPM part. So we can just say return um, military hour plus, oh, we don't need the parentheses there, plus the substring from indices two through eight. So that's gonna give us two through seven, which is starting from this colon all the way to our last second digit right here. So that should be good. Um, and we can copy it over. And everything looks like it passes. So yeah, just to summarize, the approach that I took with this was just to look at our different cases and then convert that into a very simple uh, set of if else statements. And that's basically an efficient way to do this. Luckily for this problem, the actual problem is very straightforward. So hopefully you guys didn't have any questions, but if you do, just leave them in the comments and I'll get to you very quickly and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.